Hey guys, what is up? I am Devil Driven, and I also got Manny and Tragic with me again. This one, this time we're going over the Silver Spies for Draft Mode, our tier list. Well, my tier list, and then everybody's throwing in their own little uh, honorable mention. Um, we'll just jump right into it. Uh, number five, I got the Silver Spies in there. I don't think they're going to leave them in there. Um, Tragic has a really interesting opinion on this. Why don't you tell people what you think about the silver spies tragic i actually don't think they'll be played much in arena even if they leave them in there just because uh if we think about what people play silver spies in it's usually more control decks or um decks that need more turns to set up score for example and i don't think we're gonna see that we're gonna see most arena decks be more of a value town where it'll be just about point values so you don't so think drawing every... that extra card and bleeding them is gonna come into play no. Maybe in round one, they'll be okay-ish. But if you top deck them in round two and round three, they're not going to be that much points. I yeah. mean, just imagine playing a three-card round against your opponent in round three, and you mulligan, you know, War Dancer, and you draw a spy. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> that would suck. But, That's definitely worst-case scenario. <laughs> Because they're, they're literally minus 13 points and then redraw a card. And that's, you're literally just giving your, point, your opponent 13 points. So, And I don't think card advantage in that regard of an extra half a card in a round is going to be worth making 13 points ever. Right. So I, I personally, I don't think we'll get played. It's it's a, then. So Tragic has them not even on the list. So, mm -hmm. um, What do you think about the Spies, man? Do you think they should be in draft mode or... Well, it's just going to be very polarizing, you know, opinions, I think, because, you know, obviously you win a round and then you got three spies on hand. Uh, first of all, I don't know how you win the first round, but if you do, <laughs> you're in the money. You have Igni next round later. and you really yes. make someone rage quit. But other ways, it's like, uh, as I say, as he says, you guys do have a lot of points about that. And, you know, it could be really annoying to just, you know, pretend that you're going to have a good thing and then mulligan it away and... Or, or mulligan and getting it back, you know, it's stuff like that that makes me a little bit concerned about it. Right. All right, so my uh, number four pick, I got Tor Reveal. I think Tor Reveal is going to be pretty much auto-include if you see it, unless it's going up against some kind of gold or something. But um, it just, it, like Manny was, uh, we were talking about this beforehand, man. anything that's face down is going to be serious mind games now um, on whether or not, you know, it might be a... I doubt it, but a Malena or even just the the Sapper, you know what I mean? It can cause people to just think a little bit on what they're going to do. But I just think Tor Reveal um, is going to be really, really great in uh, in draft mode. Um, what do you think about it, Manny? Oh, uh, I think it's a really good option. I just think, like as I said, all the card, the face that card, like I'm going to get my leg now all day. I'm no. going to get my leg now, like every single time, dude. I can already tell it. It's gonna be a nightmare. Yeah. What do you, What do you think about uh, Torville? Tragic. Um, I don't know how combined games will come into play. I think if I ever see a face down card, I'm always gonna assume it's Torville in 14 point. Right. So then, so then 14 point silver. I mean, I'd have to go through more of the silvers in how much better it's gonna be. So I I see it more as a 14 point card. Yeah. Um, like I, the one I like more than it is, uh, which one's the one that steals the five point card? Uh, Morin. Yeah. That, she does, that, the one, she, she does seven damage now. The one that flips and she does, she flips and does five damage or seven damage. No, the, no, the, no, the, the one that's seven, it can steal uh, one of your opponent's creatures. Malena oh yeah. That, Malena. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah that, that, that's, I like that one much better. Yeah, it, like it, it it bamboozled me and Manny a, a couple days ago. <laughs> we were able to win yeah. the game, but it uh, it really like, uh, like caught said, us off guard. Like I said, I I think everyone's gonna always assume it's gonna be Trubial in the arena. I know I will. So um so I'll always play around the fourteen points, but you know you can't play around her. And you know if she steals a five points and then she's a seventeen point silver, now you're talking very good point value. Not to mention, you know, sometimes you steal, you know, a Mork, which is probably the most annoying thing to happen if you can steal your <laughs> opponent's five-point Mork. 
Yeah, but, uh, yeah. If you if you live that dream on on draft mode, man, holy cow, you're. Yeah, you know, not just that. There's other situational things, you know, where like you ping down their hawker smuggler or you ping down their um, KSS to five and then steal it. You know, things like that. So not only is he he points on our own, but that one out of ten games where he actually steals something that actually matters, then it's you know a bunch more value. Right. Um, number three for me, I got uh, Stennis. I think uh, Stennis is pretty good. The dog likes it. The dog likes oh. it. <laughs> uh, just just being able to pull something out, and then also too, it it adding the five armor. So if it turns out that you know damage is going to be you know a thing in in draft mode, um, it 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 kind of helps it out. Um, I just think Stennis is a pretty good card. He's going to burn through your cards a little bit better too so uh stennis is my pick for for number three um what do you think about it uh, manny i think it's Stennis, like as i say uh things that are going to have like some kind of like neutral synergy like you know you play it and still have some kind of value regardless of whatever faction you're having it has a lot of a lot of potential a lot of uh playability and that's and it's one of those cards yeah yeah how about you tragic I have Stennis in the top tier. Yeah, it's, it's. I would have him in the the top group of cards. I don't know, top five, top ten. But yeah. uh, any any of the silvers that are free points that you can actually reliably get, such as Stennis, is, I mean, just the three points on its own is already worth it. Easily. Right. Yeah, and plus, then, plus it pulls silvers, too. So, you know, it's, it's yeah. not just bronzes. It can pull, you know, something really big out of your deck that uh, can, you know, yeah, just this, snowball out of control. I think it's it's great. Three, three points plus a card for silver. That's very good value in the arena. And not to mention the one out of five, one out of ten times where you pull out a Night Elect or a KSS or a Hawker Smuggler and the armor actually protects it. You know, now you're talking ridiculous value. Right. Right. Yeah, just the three, just the three points alone is already worth running. Right. Yeah, I, I, I just think it's a great card, and the, the armor and everything's just a bonus. And if, if it was just bronze, it might get knocked down a peg, but it can pull your, your good silvers out too. So, I, uh, I definitely think it's, uh, it's worth, uh, worth a good run in, uh, the, uh, the arena. Uh, number two, I just lumped them all together. The silver mages. Um. They're just all pretty good, and they're going to, if somebody is, you know, blowing you out with, you know, frosts and rains and everything else, you're going to be able to clear it and possibly heal your board. So the the mages are going to be pretty pretty auto-include. Plus two, the nine, nine damage on most of the silver mages is pretty good as well. So it's, uh, to me, they're just, if you see one, you got to grab it up unless it's going up against the gold. What do you think yeah, about it, Manny? Good. Um, well, you know, uh, the mages are important because a lot of people might get weather. Like, as I say, I was thinking a lot about, like, being a brand. I mean, if you don't have the answer for it, it's a mess. But yeah. It's just really, really bad. Uh, so things like that are what give these cards so much value. Yeah, it's it, it just seems like I, I, the thunder is a, it's, it's, it's a good either way. I mean, if you get this, you know round three it's it still might be pretty decent you know what i mean not it's not the greatest but it you know you could pretty much kill anything that's nine strength that's a bronze so it's uh it's pretty decent uh what do you think tragic uh they're must plays and they're top tier yeah. it's because they every single option on them is perfect for arena not only is clear skies always good to have as an option in your hand in case you get flooded with weather not only is weather on its own, you know, playing fog at the start of round one, for example, on a big unit, that's already awesome value. And then three, uh, thunder. So now you have removal. Yeah. So, you know, your opponent drops a KS death, your opponent drops a Hawker Smuggler, etc. You drop a thunder on it, you plus four it. I mean, it, it, has, it has an answer to every single thing that you're worried about in arena. And on top of it all in round three, if it's just a four and a thunder, that's still a 13 point silver card. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. But not but... A, the, the utility is just insane. And then it's also 13 point value on its own. 
Yeah, I mean, some of them, I mean, like, Grimace, he, he just has the blood-curdling roar and rain, you know what I mean? Or, or uh, Abaya. He's, he's, the, worst. She's, he's yeah. the worst by far. Grimace is by far the worst, and I don't know if he's even really worth taking. I guess he probably still take him, but, but yeah. uh, yeah. Yeah, and Abaya's got the, the Araka's Venom, which isn't really that great either, but, uh, um, but yeah, I just think they're, uh, they're really great. Um, and then for my number one pick, um, they, I put them together. Um, they're going to be, um, where are they at? Mork, Varg, and Old Geard. Uh, just, just having these cards coming out at the end of every round with the possibility of you just passing and your opponent going down a card are just going to be huge. Um, they're just... If you see them, you got to take them, I think. They're, I, I, there's probably cases where they're better than most golds, just just for the fact of what they do. Um, yes, dude. Carry over is going to be the, game, the name of the game, especially because, you know, you're there is going to be no... Like, there is going to be synergy, but not to the degree that, you know, there is on normal gaming. Uh, so what happens in here is you have to take the easy solution. The easy solution is to try to win one round and then do the carry over. If you get pushed around because you don't, you know, carry over, that sucks because you're going to end up losing a game uneven. <laughs> it's, it's just going to be like, oh, no, you know, and there is nothing you can do in the second round. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's your opinion on the, the carry over old gear and... More card and tragic. A little risky because if you top deck at round two or round three, much less points. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh... I don't. I don't think I'd put them in top tier, but I think they are really important though. I just don't know where I'd place them myself because carryover itself is really, really strong. But on the other hand, point value wise, how good are they really on average? No. Round one, if you play Mork, it's going to be nine, nine, what? It's supposed to be 15. Yeah. So, point value wise, not the greatest, but I don't know. The carryover, I, I'm kind of in the middle on it. I would probably put it tier two if we had wanted to put them in categories. I'd have other cards in front of them. Right. All right, and then uh, for our honorable mentions, my honorable mention is uh, Toad Prince. I just think uh, being able to draw a card and then uh, possibly getting rid of a bad card in your hand that you didn't really want, it just seems really good. Plus two, it, it consumes it, so it, it boosts it up. Um, then you might, you know, or you might be able to, you know, eat something big and then res it with something in your hand. Who knows? But uh, I just think being able to get get cards out of your hand that you don't want in your hand are, are going to be it, it seems like it's going to be a good card to have so I picked uh, Toad Prince Manny what's your pick for uh, honorable mention okay so my pick for this is actually Selic and the reason why it's Selic is because uh, once again you're going to have perceptibility you, if you for example somebody has a 3 spot and you're like oh no well then you can actually kill it you know little things like that are what attracts me about Selic is just simply um, good, yeah. you know, on like a lot of aspects, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, it seems like a good card having a little the 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 removal aspect or throwing an emissary out just to get something, you know, that you might be able to get. You, I mean, you get the pick from two, so you know, you might get something pretty decent out of it. Um, what's your uh, your silver pick, uh, Tragic? Uh, Roach. Roach. Mm -hmm. I mean, four four free points for nothing, just for being cool. I mean, can't ask for more than that, and especially in arena. And you know, normally you have four golds, and only so many of them are units, so people don't run it as much as they probably would. But in this format, where you're seeing eight gold being taken, being taken, and whatever, all of a sudden the cards come out every single time in round one. Right. Yeah, Roach so, definitely seems like a good pick, just to burn through your deck too. Yeah, and I, I say Roach because it's the safest free silver point that there is, you know, close to tennis. So Roach, I think, is probably going to be, if not the single best card silver, one of the top ones. And also along the same lines, any silver card that you can reliably play for free points is going to be very good value. 
yeah, like a Tori or stuff like that, you know, that where you can yeah, possibly exactly. res, you know, your Elven Scouts and stuff like that, or, um, yep. yeah. Any, any, any free silver card that you can get out reliably, not have to struggle to get it out, and it's like literally just free points, those cards are top tier. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I'm first off. I'm disappointed in Manny's pick because False Siri was sitting here all by herself, possibly being the best card in Arita, and oh, Manny God, didn't no. pick it. <laughs> you let your girl down, Manny. You let your girl it's, down. It's it's gonna be something like silly. You're gonna play her, and then it's gonna be like you know, uh, figurine on her. You're like, okay, <laughs> I, I, she just let me down too many times, dude. <laughs> Uh, high risk high reward on on one hand she's going to be played safer a lot of times but then you're going to run to that random game where your opponent barbagasses her right and then you're going to cry because you just got slaughtered yeah it's it's (laughs) like that's the biggest problem the card is the the highs are good you know it's a really high value card if you drop it early round one and your opponent's an answer but if your opponent answers it and they consume it then you gave your opponent six free points with your silver card. And, like, you might have just lost the game just because of the one play. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I was really trying to make this relationship work, but, you know, I, there's only so much I can do on my end, dude. Yeah. One other thing I wanted to mention, too, is uh, locks, I think, are going to be pretty important, too. Uh, some of the lock cards, you know, like Donar and, you know, um, Kieran and stuff like that, I think they're going to be really good margarita being able to reset a unit they're all going to be pretty good as well so yeah definitely... Mar- margarita deserves mention on her own i think she's by far the best locking card yeah in the group yeah ox ox is kind of overkill i don't know if you're going to be locking two units in arena if you if you're locking two units you you probably already lost the round <laughs> but uh but yeah the locks i think are going to be huge as well so i figured i'd throw those in there as well but uh, that's the silvers, guys. Uh, let us know what you think. Uh, which cards you think uh, deserve to be in the uh, the uh, the list for you guys. But uh, like always, thanks for watching. And uh, the golds are coming up next. <laughs>